Hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about Kevin J. Anderson's The Dark Between Stars. <clears throat> now this is actually the first installment of a trilogy called The Saga of Shadows. <clears throat> and uh, this is also a sequel to a series that... Um, <clears throat> this trilogy is a sequel to a series that I've reviewed a while back called The Saga of the Seven Sons. <clears throat> the setup is that it takes place about 20 years after The uh, Seven Sons, and, um, <clears throat> and, dur uh, and, dur and after which time that they're referred to as the Elemental Wars, wherein uh, called the Elemental Wars because... <clears throat> we have the um, earth, you know, tree ships, you know, fires, you know, you know, these beings that live inside stars called the pharaohs, the earth ones called the Verdani, <clears throat> the um, hydrogues that are air-based creatures that live in gas giants, and wentils, which are water-based life forms that live inside comets and whatever water bodies of water. <coughs> and, um, yeah, and, um, though now that I, uh, think about it, there are quite a few flaws with the Saga of the Seven Sons. I, I thought it was fantastic at the time that I, that I read it, and I still do, but I recognize there are plenty of, uh, flaws that make it kind of suffer. You know, there's, um, <coughs> I guess the most in particular, one would be like, um, we like so many characters as well as, um, you know, just how long the series was. I mean, seven installments. And, um, you know, then there was the Romers, which were kind of annoying and stuff. And so, and yeah, you know, with uh, <clears throat> how, like, apparently, like, even they, they want to be like a separate nation and treated like separate and stuff, not have to necessarily go by the same, like, laws, but it seems, but they still want to have, like, all of the benefits of being part of the Hansa, you know, like, <clears throat> they still want to have a military come in and protect them, and, um, <clears throat> they refuse to build a military of their own, you know, because it's not really profitable, so, like, even when the military starts attacking them, then they keep like, like, you can't attack us, we're civilians, we're civilians, even, you know, it's completely obvious that after it becomes so obvious that they're not going to give a crap about whether they're civilians or not. And even when they're arming <clears throat> the ships to fight the military, you know, and sending them out, they're still sending the message from the space station is like, we're civilians, don't attack us, you know. <clears throat> yeah. And, um... I guess, and I, I rate it as a 5 out of 5 being, like, highly recommended, but now I guess I'll, I think I'm going to, now that I think about it, I'm going to take it down to a uh, 4, you know, like, I still think it's fun, still a comfortable, still a comfortable recommendation, but, yeah, anyway, I'm on to the sequel, uh, back to the sequel, I should, back to this, I should say, <clears throat> it takes place about 20 years after the end of the last a book of the Saga of the Seven Sons, and, um, and we get so many, um, and, we, and of course we get more world building, you know, the, um, they talk about the Shauna Ray, and, um, you know, they actually come back, there's the Anthos, which were these bird-like beings that, <clears throat> they, they really show, like, a brief period, only like a few pages, or like not even not just like a cup like a couple sentences like where the um when the Verdani tree ships were like taking off and they like it's one of then they notice like a a skeleton of some tree of some a uh, bird like life form <clears throat> the, uh, but, but now that we know that they're called the Anthos or Onthos or whatever you know and uh, <clears throat> the black robots making a turn, and like I said, the Sean Ray, and um, <clears throat> and 
the, the, which are like these shadow-based life forms, hence the name, the Saga of Shadows, you know? And, um, and apparently, like, we also eventually learn that there's this other race, I mean, not other race, but there's this, like, like, the reason why they're doing this is because they're afraid that there's this other great, massive life form that's even gr more powerful than all the Shauna Ray. And, um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Although, based, you know, based on the, um, the descriptions of this life form that even the Shauna Ray are afraid of, it seems, you know, to obvious take, um, <clears throat> Obviously, to take some uh, Lovecraftian type inspiration from how it's described, sounds very like Azathoth or something. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Anyway, um, whereas when I anyway, like there, there's still the flaws, you know, like there's still the um, parts where like. There's, um, like, there's still quite a lot of characters to keep track of, you know, there's, <clears throat> and, you know, there's, um, there's, like, you know, I still find the roamers annoying, but, um, overall, I like the world building, I like the, um, like the, like, I always like the little index things where they explain all this stuff, like, it's not really necessary, but it's just nice to have it there. You know, and, um, <clears throat> and of course they solved one of the problems with the Saga of Seven Sons by taking this down to a trilogy, you know, which is why I give this a rating of four out of five. <clears throat> it still has prob has some, like, problems, but it's still a comfortable recommendation, still a lot of fun still like it. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, next time we're going to be taking a look at another sequel with the 100 Day 21. Until then, see you later. Please support your local bookstores and libraries by going there and checking stuff out and buying books or whatever. And have a nice day.